Story time, my toxic best friend outed me to the entire school. So one day, one of my best friends from a neighboring school decided to move to my school. And she was extremely upset because her best friend over there came out as bi. So I ended up using this as an opportunity to come out bi as well. And she was like, well, it's okay for you. I just got really close to her. We'll call the girl Becky because no one likes a Becky. And we can call her friend Heather. So fast forward to after the situation had calmed down, we decided to all go prom dress shopping. So Heather and I were talking and we really hit it off. And I think Becky legitimately forgot about our sexuality because we were all talking about how much we have in common and we brought that up as well. She just looked at us and was like, oh, I forgot about that. And she just shrugged it off. But we continued to hang out for a few weeks. One of these weekends, we all went to church together and the sermon was about how God accepts you no matter what your sexuality is. But of course, Becky turns around to us and says that Heather and I could never date because it would F everything up. Later that day, Heather actually ended up admitting that she had feelings for me and this is when Becky lost it. Stay tuned for part two and follow me on Instagram. Story time of how I burned down my entire house when I was eight years old. So basically we had so many candles in the house I guess just because my mom was obsessed with candles. I was also obsessed with fire. So every time I seen the candle I would put my finger in the fire and no it didn't hurt me whatsoever I guess it was just amusing to me and everybody called me a pyro. So one day I was scrolling on Musical.ly, and on like the Feature Me page, I saw something with a candle. And it was like how to make your own candle or something like that. But you had to make your own candle out of a candle. So I went into my room and I closed my door. And like the first step was melting the candle all the way. So I lit the candle and then I put a piece of paper in there. I don't know why I did, but I did. And the fire started getting so big, so I lifted the piece of paper and I threw it on my rug. And I didn't want to get in trouble for fire on the floor, so I just left my room and left it alone. And I kid you not, just a couple minutes later, I hear the smoke detector going off. And my older brother screaming. I'm running out of time, like, for birds. Story time about how my boyfriend's best friend tried to ruin our relationship. So, a little background information. My boyfriend used to be best friends with this one girl. We're gonna call her Jamie. Well, Jamie and my boyfriend were best friends for years. And the friendship was more flirty than anything. Well, him and I got to know each other during track season. So, we were always hanging out after school. And sometimes Jamie would be there, too. Well, the one night him and I were on FaceTime and we were talking about how we really liked each other. So the next day we started dating. And I was good friends with Jamie too. But then after we started dating, she started acting really weird towards me. Like I would try to say hi whenever I saw her in the hallways. And she would just give me a dirty ass look. So then I told my boyfriend how I thought that she was really mad at me. And he said that he would talk to her. Well, a week before him and I started dating, she told us that there was this guy that she really wanted to ask to prom. And she said that she liked him for a while. Well, then my boyfriend said, apparently a few days ago, you were hitting on the boy that she was going to ask to prom. So then I started to connect the dots and I was like, oh shit, life apart. If I ever die, my boyfriend is not allowed to move on. First of all, I'm bad bitch, you can't kill me. Second of all, I will come back as ghost motherfucker. Boo, bitch. Forget. So y'all, let me tell you about this conversation I had with one of my friends. I just couldn't believe it. Okay, so she came up with this really, really good idea. And I was like, yo, that's dope. You should do it. And she was like, I can't. I just looked on Instagram and saw that they already had that. I said, so why can't you do it? She was like, because it's already on Instagram. Somebody already did it. I said, okay, so why can't you do it? She said, because somebody already did it. I said, didn't Rihanna create Fenty like there wasn't Mac? Did she not create Savage Fenty like we didn't have Victoria's Secret and other lingerie stores? How many McDonald's and Burger Kings are across from each other like they don't sell the same food? How many beauty supplies are selling the same bundle on the same block? Okay, the market is oversaturated, but it don't have a you, baby. Like if God gave you the gift, your gift gonna pop differently from theirs. Everything you touch prospers, so if they did it first, it don't matter. Yours gonna be different because the market is missing a you. And she was like, oh, I never thought of it like that. Yeah, Rihanna wasn't thinking like that either. She just created because God gave her a gift. And now look, billionaire, you're sleeping on your dreams, kid. You're sleeping on your dreams. Part two about how my boyfriend's best friend tried to ruin our relationship. So like I said, I started to connect the dots after that. And then I realized that she was talking about my boyfriend. We're just going to call him Josh. So as he's telling me this, I immediately get a FaceTime call from her. So I answer the phone and she says, well, I think I should just confront the situation now. So the first thing that she says is, you knew I liked Josh. Like, how could you do this to me? I had a poster board and everything. So I'm just like, well, why didn't you tell me that you liked him? And she goes, what the fuck do you mean? Like, you knew. But I was sitting there thinking about the fact that they were best friends for five years and nothing ever happened. So it's really not my fault. And then this girl has the nerve to say, I'm pretty sure if you just break up with him now, me and you can get past this and still be friends. So I said no. So then I called my boyfriend, told him that we talked it out. And I didn't even tell him about what she said or anything like that. Because I just wanted the situation to be over and done with. So a few weeks after that, she decided to get her brother involved. 
Her brother and Josh were best friends, by the way. Well, then her brother told Josh that him and I had been hooking up like for part three. Part two of how I burned down my entire house at just eight years old. So continuing on with the story, after I hear the smoke alarms going off and my brother screaming, I knew exactly what I did. And I blamed it all on my brother. And to this day, they still think it's my brother. Even though it was in my room, but my family believed whatever I said. Anyways, the whole back side of the house was on fire. And we all rush out of the house. And of course, my mom takes care of it. I'm pretty sure she called 911. Well, duh. Sadly, our two cats, two bunnies, and four hamsters were in the house and our bird, but our bird was getting ready to pass anyways. I'm not sure how, but the house caught on fire so quickly, and the entire thing just blew up into flames. There might have been something else that the fire triggered to make it more big, I guess? I don't really know how to word that. But we ended up raising enough money to move to a different house because we lost every single one of our belongings. When the house burned down, there was only one wall standing, and it was the wall of pictures of my grandma who passed 10 years ago. One time, I was behind the register at Victoria's Secret. This customer walks in and immediately everybody spots her as a red flag. She's just picking up items, throwing them in her bag, not looking at sizes, not looking at colors. So everybody's like, mm. everyone's on their walkie like. Watch this customer. She's coming to the fitting room. She's headed to the cash shop. Somebody get her. Check her ID. Get her. Get her. She has a bag full of stuff. And guess who gets her at the register? Me. So she comes to my register and she dumps out her stuff and you know we're having a regular conversation. Hi, how are you? Yada yada yada. Her total comes up to probably between $700 to $900. It was expensive. My manager is at the register next to me talking to me on the walkie. Ashley, make sure you get that ID. Don't matter what she's using, make sure you get that ID. So I ask her for the ID because she's paying credit. Why do you need to ask for my ID? Just take it. Run it. I'm like, no, ma'am, I'm sorry. I need your ID for the purchase. She starts to raise her voice at me. 